hello there everyone. My name is Mangrove Jane, also known as Groves. I hope you're all having a wonderful day today and both your first life and your second life are treating you well. I've hesitated for a long time in making this video. I've spent some time thinking about it and the repercussions of releasing it. I considered why I started making this vlog in my blog in the first place and so I thought I would put it out there anyway for myself and for the memories and for anyone wondering about the things that I am also wondering about. For the longest time in Second Life I kept to myself. I didn't really put myself out there and try to meet anybody or start friendship. I guess because I wasn't sure what I was really doing or where I was going with my time in world. I kept myself at a distance because I was distracted but also because I was worried. I'm not really a social butterfly or a party girl. I live a quiet second life because a lot of the time I'm simply working or I'm logged in but tabbed out. People will message me and sometimes I don't get back for hours, either because I've forgotten I'm logged in or I'm absorbed in something I'm doing. I always feel terrible for that. It takes a really patient and understanding person to deal with my long in-world silences and some days are just hard for me. Some days social interactions are filled with a minefield of insecurities and paranoia and stress. I go over every conversation I've had that day and remember every word and hate myself for them. I physically cringe and have to try to breathe through moments of sheer panic and try to go through different logic techniques to talk myself down from the anxiety attack. When you meet someone who can deal with all that and be okay with your constant bouts of awkward and long thousand topic rambles, suddenly you feel less of all that about yourself. So one day I reached out to someone I'd been watching on YouTube and reading her blogs. It started with the sentence, this is my year to be brave. I didn't want to be alone anymore. I just talked and kept on talking. I listened, I was persistent and I reached. I asked way too many questions as I always do and she actually didn't think that was such a terrible thing. In giving of myself, I found that perhaps I wasn't always so very awkward. I found that I could be fun and other people would find that fun too. Friendship sometimes is like a mirror. It reflects back at you those things about yourself that other people see in you. I'm grateful for the few friends that I've made. I'm thankful for their patience. I've met some genuinely lovely people. I've talked about some of them before. Some have come and gone as lightly as a feather touch upon my life. Others have pulled up a chair and stayed. I have friends I've met in other worlds. There is a particularly persistent group who I've been talking to since Vanilla World of Warcraft. We are a small group, but we have had many years of fun and fights, caring and consistency. I've met each one of them in real life, but that is not what made us close or even kept us there. That was just a matter of location. Recently, I lost a friend. It didn't end with a bang, but only a steady silence over the internet sees. There was no huge argument, just a quiet loss, confusion and absence. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I retreated back to my closest friends, those tried and true. I grieved because the ending of a close friendship is as sad and heartbreaking as ending any relationship. I questioned myself. I questioned my understanding of truth and reality. I thought about words I read about internet friendships and I wondered, I wondered what the reality is. There have been many philosophers who have pondered what makes a friendship. Aristotle defined three kinds of friendship, of utility, of pleasure and of the good. He pondered that the first two sorts of friendship were short-term friendships, derived of a selfish nature for usefulness, practicality or good times. These friendships were short-lived because our pleasures and desires change over time, and so the friends that are used for such ends are also short-lived. The third sort of friendship was that sort that arose from a mutual admiration of the good in another and striving to bring out the good in each other. If these are the types of friendship, what defines a friendship? What is important if we desire the kind of friendship that is long lived and strives for mutual benefit? An entry on friendship in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy states that, in philosophical accounts of friendship, several themes recur consistently, although various accounts differ in precisely how they spell these out. These themes are mutual caring or love, intimacy and shared activity. Mutual caring or love, I think, is something that grows over time with both intimacy and shared activity. Intimacy in this sense of the word is not a physical intimacy, but rather a sharing of those things we hold close to ourselves. It is the kind of intimacy that comes only through mutual sharing, of taking a risk and trusting. Intimacy is also formed through shared activity. We all have our in-jokes, those only the people with whom we have shared circumstances have a part in. So these things are caught together in a feedback loop. They strengthen each other and allow friendship to grow and develop over time. 
It takes work and understanding. Without these things, friendships fail. So I see now. I see where things went wrong and I accept the loss. However, does that mean it wasn't real? When a friendship is based over the internet, when you have met that person online in a virtual world or through social media, is that friendship any less real for the lack of proximity? For me, the reality is this. Each and every friendship is real and meaningful. I don't care if it is real life or a second life, a physical reality or a digital reality. The feelings are real and the emotions are real. The trauma at facing the end, it feels very real. Because here's the thing, our avatars, they may be digital. We may exist as pixels over the internet and virtual worlds, but that picture is just a representation of ourselves. It isn't real, but I am. It is an image of my reality. Just as my body is a representation of who I am here in the physical world, but it is not the entirety of who I am. And so, for me, the value of friendship lies in its shared reality of mutual caring, intimacy and shared activity. It is real, even when its time has passed and all that lingers are the memories and the emotion. And that thought is enough to make me smile, pick myself up, hold the hands of friends who still stand beside me and try again. So today's video has been a bit of a somber one and it is probably a bit heavy going, but I just wanted to get that off my mind and out into the world. What are your thoughts on friendships made over the internet? Do you feel like they are real or are they less real? I'd love to hear some of your stories about your friendships in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, punch the bell as well, which will give you notifications of any new videos I release. And I will catch you all in the next video.